नमस्कार हेलो न वेरी वॉम वेलकम व्यूअर्स यूर वॉचिंग द स्पेशल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सनसेट टी वी बिल्स एंड इन साइट योर वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर व्यूज न्यूज एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ प्रपोज लेजिस्लेशन ऑफ इंडिया दैट हैव फॉर रीचिंग इम्प्लीकेशन एंड इम्पैक्ट योर लाइफ आई एम योर होस्ट कृति मिश्रा एंड टूडे द स्पॉट लाइट इज ऑन द डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस एंड क्रेडिट गारंटी कॉर्पोरेशन अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दैक्ट सीज टू प्रोवाइड डिपॉजिटर्स टाइम बाउंड एक्सेस टू देर इंश्योर डिपॉजिट अमाउंट in case they are restricted from accessing their bank deposits and before the detailed analysis let's take a look at the highlights of the act it amends the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation act of 1961 it will provide funds up to 5 lakh rupees to an account holder within 90 days in the event of a bank coming under the moratorium imposed by the reserve bank of india It will cover all types of banks which also include regional rural banks and cooperative banks as well. So why were these amendments needed? While coming on the heels of recent bank failures, the most recent examples being of the Punjab and Maharashtra Cooperative Bank and the Lakshmi Vilas Bank when restrictions were imposed on the withdrawal of deposits. These measures are designed to protect the interests of depositors and bolster confidence in the banking system. These changes mean the most depositors in the country 98.3% of all deposit accounts and 50.9% of all deposits by value will be covered. This places India in a favorable position when compared to other countries. As Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman noted, deposit insurance coverage globally is for around 80% of accounts and 20 to 30% of the deposit value. For depositors who have had to wait for long periods to get their deposits which are insured against default the latest measure will bring considerable relief DICGC a wholly owned subsidiary of the RBI provides an insurance cover on the bank deposits and for deeper understanding of these amendments i'm joined by an illustrious panel of guests joining us to virtual platform mr dinesh kumar khara chairman state bank of india and dr amar patnaik member of parliament rajya sabha from the bjd i welcome you both on sunset tv and thank you so much for joining us and before we commence our discussion let's take a look at how our parliamentarians debated this bill the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation amendment bill 2021 ye ye bill ko hum support kar rahe hain it is one of the outstanding attempts at saving the small depositors interest In fact, compared to the global deposits, 80% of all global deposits are covered. But in this particular bill, because of this bill, 98.3% of all the deposits are covered, and 50.9% of all deposit in terms of value compared to 20-30% of the global deposit value. I think it is going to bring a lot of relief to all the small depositors who are unable to, you know, get money. Many of the depositors are not getting. more than the emergency money for their medical treatment and so on so in spite of having raised it to 1 lakh and now to 5 lakhs we want to make sure that within 90 days depositors get the money so that the small depositors who make up for 98% of all depositors will get the money in time that is 90 days and this uh, will may bring in great relief to all those banks cooperative banks small cooperative banks which come under stress sakara let me begin the program with you the new deposit insurance law is ensuring that depositors in bankrupt banks are getting quick payments with it nearly paying out 1500 crore in less than 6 months of its enactment this is more than a quarter the amount the deposit insurance corporation has paid out in the 60 years since it came into existence in 1961 that's an impressive start sir what are your opening thoughts yeah i think uh, for a economy like ours where uh, the deposit into the into the banking system uh, constitutes one of the major option for uh, channelizing the deposits in the country this kind of a reassurance through the dicgc act amendment goes a long way in terms of you know showing up the confidence and also i think uh, in terms of the measures taken in terms of 90 days the payment will be ensured and it will not be at the most it can be extended by by another 90 days it has it has certainly brought in the element of certainty in terms of 
how soon the depositor can get the access to the money which is available from the insurance so i think that way it goes a very long way in terms of showing up the confidence and more so when the economy is growing and you know uh, there is a emergence of uh, uh, all kind of uh, entities even cooperative banks are also moving far and uh, wide so that way uh, this also brings in a lot of confidence with the customers uh nevertheless what you mentioned in terms of the data about 98% of the account holders gets insured though in terms of amount it is about 50% but nevertheless very large population of the depositors gets the comfort so i think it's a very very encouraging uh, amendment which has been brought in and uh, uh, also it was ensured that some of the cooperative banks which were having some kind of a restriction for draws uh, those customers were also insured that they get the money and it was all done within the year 21 itself calendar year 21 itself so i think that is quite encouraging all right so as you said that it is a very encouraging amendment and also as you pointed out that element of certainty is very important let's take that to dr patnaik dr patnaik the economic survey this year also pointed out that deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation amendment act passed by parliament has made significant changes in the landscape of deposit insurance in india you were the lead speaker from your party on this particular bill when it was debated in parliament what are your opening remarks there is no question uh, and no doubt about the fact that this has given a great uh, deal of comfort to the uh, investors uh, to depositors and more particularly the small time deposit depositors because it is these uh, small depositors who suffer the maximum uh, when a bank goes bust whether it is a cooperative bank or it's a regional rural bank or even it's a commercial bank uh, and that happens because of the moratorium that the rbi brings in and so these people whose life savings are sometimes uh, in the form of these deposits have to run from pillar to post and sometimes wait for days together till again the rbi gives a permission for withdrawal uh, so this a uh, bill uh, or to this now that the bill has been passed uh, into an act this act actually ensures that the small depositors will have confidence in the banking system whether it is a cooperative bank whether it is a rural rural bank all kinds of banks so i think it is a great initiative it's a great act a uh, piece of legislation uh, to uh, to to great uh, to get these uh, deposits from small investors who look up to the bank for a, a fixed rate of interest and so that makes the entire thing very certain and stable uh, the important thing however and you know of course uh, the fact that you mentioned that in one year itself uh, a large payout has been uh, made and that is primarily because uh, the new act covers even the 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 uh, uh, failures that had happened in the past period period before the bill has been passed and therefore this is this is this is a great thing which honorable finance minister has said however there is a concern that i have raised there and i raise it here that not all the banks and not all cooperative banks are actually registered because this is uh, available only when a particular bank chooses to get registered and pays that amount of insurance premium uh, while the big banks are of course covered the cooperative banks the urban cooperative banks Uh, and and the small uh, payment banks i think they need to be brought into the fold i'm sure the finance ministry would be on the job and trying to address this so that more uh, uh, depositors are covered under the scheme all right let's take your query to mr kara mr kara how do we assuage the concern yeah. that dr patnaik raised no i think uh, of late since now the regulator happens to be only one which is this is a bank of india i'm sure uh during the course of their inspection they will be insisting for the all the deposits to be insured so i think that is something which is expected and i'm sure it will happen uh having said that uh, you know the very important component is that uh, the people who are walking with the deposit into these banks are the one who are looking for the certainty both in terms of principal as well as interest so that is the very nature of the customer so naturally uh, being the regulator i am uh, uh, i'm quite uh, confident that the reserve bank will be quite uh, cognizant of this particular need and uh, i expect that they will uh, rather prevail upon such institutions which are not covered uh, which have not got themselves insured to be insured and otherwise also generally um, 
you know, uh, as we have seen in the West, uh, there, if at all, any institution is uh, insured through the deposit insurance, invariably it is stated on the board itself that it is insured under the DICGC or, for instance, in US, it is mentioned that it is FDIC insured. If at all, and actually that happens normally in the evolved uh, financial uh, yes. uh, sector or, or maybe the evolved countries where the where the financial literacy happens to be better. So I think over here also in due course, there would be adequate appreciation that if at all uh, they, I mean, the customers are looking for the certainty of their deposit, they will per perhaps start inquiring whether this particular bank is insured or not. So that is the other way that it can it it can probably be brought in. And since I think uh, thanks to the Jandan accounts which I got opened, now customers across the country are quite uh, quite vigilant in terms of uh, the hard-earned savings. So I'm sure uh, even this particular aspect will also be um, will be taken care of. And maybe uh, even there are depositors associations also across the country. So even they will also be getting into some kind of a for, of a financial literacy in, in terms of educating the depositors also about this. All right, you're making a very valid point, sir, but taking a cue from what you said, I'd also like to ask you, can the DICGC withdraw deposit insurance coverage from any bank and what will be the corporation's liability to the bank on deregistration? Well, of course, uh, the, the first and foremost is as of now, they are required to pay the premium to have the insurance. So that is the, that is the first and foremost. And as such, uh, more than that, it is, uh, in fact, in terms of oversight, in terms of compliance of the regulation, it is all taken care of by RBI. And since it is a wholly owned subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India, I expect that there would be some exchange of information, if at all they have some discomfort on this matter. But nevertheless, as far as the depositors are concerned, for them, if at all there's an indication that it is insured, their deposits are insured. That would be the only indication. They are they are probably not expected to know that what is going behind that. So I think this is what uh, what my sense is. All right, uh, but Dr. Patnaik, while this will was being passed in Parliament, you do recall that there was this raging debate. Economists are divided on the merits of deposit insurance. Now supporters of deposit insurance argue that it can help boost the confidence of depositors, also in the banking system. While the critics say. The deposit insurance, on the other hand, it leads to moral hazard. What are the benefits and risks of deposit insurance, according to you? Uh, thank you. Very good question. And uh, in fact, uh, I had raised this point in uh, during uh, the debate on this bill uh, uh, when I spoke on the bill in the Rajya Sabha about the issue of the moral hazard. In any insurance product, the issue of moral hazard is always there. Uh, and uh, it is it is therefore uh, uh, more important in case of life insurance because the condition of a patient or condition of a policyholder uh, as as regards his health is not um, may not get correctly stated. Uh, however, in the case of the deposit insurance, I think the moral hazard uh, issue is uh, uh, much less as far as the uh, subscriber uh, or as far as the depositor is concerned. Uh, it is more from the point of view of the uh, bank, uh, whether a bank would think that since it is insured and since it has paid the insurance premium and uh, since the, um, the coverage is to the extent of 98%, then it might as well probably fail. But then the uh, our regulator, which is the Reserve Bank of India, which is also going to be um, regulating or kind of administratively uh, over the guarantee corporation, uh, it would ensure, and it has been doing so, its, it's mandate is to ensure that the banking system runs properly well as to the prudential norms and as well as the guidelines that is uh, there from time to time through regular inspections, regular audits, and many other, uh, through, through forensic audits, through regular, many other, uh, many such uh, procedures and mechanisms. So I don't think uh, the regular process of banking supervision will have any kind of laxity because a bank is uh, has got itself insured. And therefore, the system will be, I'm sure RBI will ensure that the system runs well and would not allow the moral hazard uh, to happen to, uh, particularly to be taken recourse to by smaller banks. Uh, so even though there is this risk always there, I think the 
risk is minimum given the RBI's uh, historical uh, uh, supervision over these banks. Uh, but I'm sure RBI would probably put in more checks and controls uh, for particularly small sized banks, which might face the uh, issue of moral hazard. But as far as uh, subscribers or depositors are concerned, I think it's a great thing. It is there in every country. And uh, more importantly, it is, it is, it is their hard-earned savings, which they have to put at some place. And it is the banking system, which they will be looking up to. And uh, by increasing it in the last legislation to 5 uh, lakhs from 1 lakh, which was there for a long, long time, and now giving this insurance uh, backup and cover, I think the government and the, and the finance minister and the uh, government of the day has made a very positive and progressive uh, legislation uh, to, to give confidence to the small invest, uh, small uh, depositors. All right, Mr. Khara, where do you stand on this debate? Well, uh, the way I look at it is that, uh, you know, as well as the oversight uh, from the regulator is concerned, it is done through multiple means in terms of, you know, on an ongoing basis, uh, they are, uh, banks are required to, to share various kind of information and data. Essentially, what happens is when it comes to banks, they are having the short-term deposit and they are actually lending into uh, some kind of long-term loans. So uh, the major issue is essentially relating to the ALM. Uh, asset liability management yes. and also to ensure that the credit risk which they are assuming is uh, is uh, is in line with the risk appetite which the bank can bear. So I think these are the kind of things which are subject to oversight by the regulator on an ongoing basis. So I think uh, the way I look at it is that, you know, uh, I think that particular aspect of the supervision will ensure uh, that the banks remain of a good health. And uh, at the same time, if at all there are any such cause of uh, concern, and the uh, I mean RBI can immediately come into action. So that is something which we have seen in the past also. Uh, I think uh, insurance, uh, I mean deposit insurance, if at all it is there, it is essentially from the point of view because when it comes to the depositor, he will probably not know what is the kind of a health of the bank otherwise, you know, because it involves a lot many entry cases to be observed and to be seen. And for the depositor, it is only uh, an, an indicative thing that, you know, if, if at all insurance is a small depositor who may not have the requ uh, uh, required insight into the functioning of the bank, but they can certainly be assured of, their, uh, of the certainty of getting the principal back, if at all this kind of a insurance has been made available. So I think uh, it actually takes care of the requirement and uh, what mentioned what is mentioned that uh, the way I look at it is that deposit insurance per se will not really be any kind of a license for any bank to be lax in terms of their uh, efficient governance and uh, right kind of value system. Right, so there would be no laxity on part of uh, the banks. But Mr. Khara, as a depositor, a very elementary question that comes to my mind. If I have my funds on deposit at two different banks, and those two banks are closed on the same day. Are my funds added together or insured separately? See, this insurance is offered from a bank-to-bank -bank basis. So if at all both the banks are insured, then it is up to that 5 lakh rupees for each of the bank. And in the, in the bank, there could be multiple accounts. In, uh, suppose in the bank A, there could be multiple accounts. And in the bank B, there could be multiple accounts. And if at all both the banks are insured, then the limit is according to the bank. So that is how it will work. All right, uh, Dr. Patnaik, how does a deposit insurance system deal with the systemic problems of our banking system? So this is this is this is the uh, uh, most uh, you know German issue as far as the Indian banking system is concerned, which is evolving over a period of time. Uh, but then the uh, uh, issue which has been there is uh, of uh, regulatory, um, you know, the failure of the banks, and then the regulator has actually of late uh, jumped in very quickly and has uh, taken charge. Uh, but then, you know, these failures, uh, whether they should be called as failures on the bank or on, on the side of the bank in question, or on the side of the regulator itself, that is a regulatory failure. Um, these are uh, questions which are uh, st which still remain with either side not accepting 
that it was their uh, mistake. So the the failure in the banking system uh, that puts everyone under stress and particularly these uh, small uh, depositors. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, insurance scheme, the way the design has of the bill uh, of the act has been made uh, of the scheme that has been made that without waiting for anything to happen, the if the bank is insured, then the corporation starts making the payments, contacting. There is a procedure which has been uh, laid out, uh, which is really very good because, uh, as Mr. Kara said, uh, what the depositor, small depositor wants is that when he needs that money for, let us say, marriage of his daughter or, let's say, uh, for paying uh, for, a, for, for, for an accident which has happened for hospital bills, then he shouldn't, be, he shouldn't have to run from pillar to post he shouldn't be uh, waiting for days together. So that has been taken care of, care of, and that way it is a very sensitive bill. However, it doesn't take care, of course, of the uh, 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 malaise that's there in the Indian banking system, Absolutely. which, of course, has decreased over a period of time because of several uh, measures that have been taken from time to time, both by the regulator as well as by the government. But I think the, uh, the level of uh, confidence that the uh, banking system uh, on the banking system by the small depositors who invariably deposit in cooperative banks, urban cooperative banks, central cooperative banks, regional rural banks. I think that uh, the, the ecosystem over there of governance has to improve. Uh, and I'm aware of the fact that the uh, several over a period of several years, the Reserve Bank has been taking action. You would also be aware that the urban cooperative bank supervision also has been taken over by the Reserve Bank of India. Yes. The concern is then that whether the Reserve Bank of India as one monolithic organization would be able to perform so many several uh, so many different functions at the same time. Now this is a uh, this is a, this is an issue which requires a larger debate. Uh, so far I think uh, we are on the right track. Maybe we have to uh, move faster and move better. And to add to what you said, though the RBI and the centre keep monitoring the health of the banks, there have been numerous recent cases of banks, especially cooperative banks, being unable to fulfil their obligations towards the depositors due to the imposition of a moratorium by the RBI. But the moot question remains. Mr. Kara and Dr. Patnaik, this would be your closing remark. What is deposit insurance's contribution to financial stability? Mr. Kara, first of all. Yeah, I think uh, as I understand the situation, uh, it is, of course, in the past also, as Dr. Patnayak rightly mentioned, that RBA has been uh, upscaling its uh, oversight mechanism uh, on, on the banking system. So I think uh, now with the, uh, with the cooperative banks coming in, which was actually a bit of a weaker link in, in, in the whole system, but now since it, even that will be also subject to oversight from RBI, uh, I feel that uh, the instances of such failures will come down significantly. And uh, RBI has got very strong system in terms of obtaining uh, the information almost on a, on a real-time basis from the bank. And, and apart from that, it also makes the boards of the banks responsible in terms of reviewing the health of the bank on an ongoing basis. So I think it's a very elaborate mechanism which has been put in place in the country over the years. It will be, uh, and so far it was only for the, uh, the commercial banks, but now it will be for the cooperative banks also. RRBs, as it is, were being the first level of regulator for them was NABARD, but uh, actually, uh, actually uh, for all purposes, supervisor was NABARD and the regulator was always RBI. So they were always under the overall ambit of, uh, uh, of the RBI. But now I think, uh, in fact, RRBs, we were not having any such major issues. But majorly, it was in the cooperative bank. Even that sector has also now been brought into RBI, uh, the, the oversight of the uh, of the RBI, which will actually help quite a lot in terms of building up the confidence, even in the cooperative sector also, which have got a very wide reach in terms of capturing deposit across the country. Dr. Patak, do you agree? Uh, I think as far as the legislation is concerned, it's a boon to the uh, uh, small uh, depositors. No, no question about that. And as Mr. Kara said, since the cooperatives have been brought into fold, who have a very large reach, and particularly at the bottom of the pyramid in the villages, uh, through these uh, you know uh, mini banks, various uh, kinds of cooperative structures, 
it's indeed actually a great help because it, it, it brings a stability to the entire banking system, confidence to the uh, small uh, depositor. And uh, most importantly, I think uh, it is one step ahead uh, in, in, in evolving our uh, financial uh, banking system in, uh, in particular and the financial system in general, uh, because it is these uh, small investors, uh, small depositors, uh, who would invariably be looking for a safe place where they can put their hard-earned money and get it as and when they require. The failure of many banks in the last few years and, uh, and I, I was an Auditor General of Cooperative Societies in Orissa yes. for five years, and I've seen how urban cooperative banks, which ran a daily deposit schemes. So a person is giving five rupees, 10 rupees every day, but when the bank fails, and it did indeed fail some of those banks, I found that they were really harassed because they could not get back, withdraw their money when they needed it for their daughter's marriage, as I said, at the cost of repetition, or as looking after okay. their father's uh, hospital bills. Uh, so this uh, uh, bill is uh, this particular legislation is a very humane bill and at the same time uh, a bill which is very progressive uh, in the field of uh, Indian banking system. Absolutely, Dr. Patnaik. Even the RBI's financial stability report for July 2021 revealed that the corporation processed claims amounting to 993 crore during 2020-21 with a view to ensuring payment to insured depositors of liquidated banks even under the pandemic situation. This certainly provides immediate relief to thousands of depositors who had their money parked in stressed lenders. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Khara and Dr. Patnaik. Next week, we'll return with incisive analysis of another important bill. Till then, take care and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Namaskar.